Hi everybody, this is Richard Slay, and today I wanted to talk about getting back to the absolute basics of playing the harmonica. And I was inspired by this book, The Five Elements of Effective Thinking, to put this little talk together. In, in that book, The Five Elements of Effective Thinking, the first chapter is all about thoroughly understanding the basics of whatever subject you're trying to learn. And the people that wrote this book are math teachers, and they one of the examples they gave is that if they have a student who's struggling in class, that it's usually because they didn't really think learn what was in the course before this course. And by going back and reviewing and really understanding the core principles, then they could start to figure things out much faster and much better. And the same thing holds with anything you're trying to learn. And when it comes to playing the harmonica and getting a rich, powerful tone, going back to the basics daily with a simple practice will make a big difference in your ability to be a big presence when you play music. So with that in mind, today I'd like to give you a crash course on how to create big tone, articulation, and timing on the harmonica. And it starts with your embouchure, the way you put the harmonica in your mouth, because you don't want to be leaking air. Your lips should be relaxed. And you should put the harmonica in your mouth so that it sinks into your mouth pretty deep. I'm, I'm allowing it to sink in about that much, okay? So, and you, you should be relaxed in your upper body. Then you're ready for stage one of creating tone on the harmonica, which is core body articulation. By core body, I mean your diaphragm that operates your lungs in cooperation with your core body muscles. And the way you do this, the way you practice this, is to yawn. That resets your upper body, relaxes you, and opens up your throat. And you want to keep your throat open when you're doing this particular form of articulation. And then you do double in-breath. Moving the air through your throat only with your core, the diaphragm, and your core muscles. So your throat stays wide open and you work on that. That's step one. And that teaches you how to stop and start your breath and also how to reverse the fl flow of your breath from out breath to in breath and to learn to do it as quickly as possible. So that's the first stage of developing your, your ability to control the sound of your instrument. Okay, so you work on that every day for a little while. Yawn, open your throat, and resist the urge to start using your throat. That's stage one. Stage two is using your throat articulation. Now, as you speed this up, At some point, you start to feel your throat involuntarily, basically kicking in, and then it's the back of your tongue doing a coughing type thing. <laughs> While maintaining your, um, your control down here, so you're setting your abdominal muscles and you're using them, learning to use them to work with your diaphragm and you just you'll feel this engagement down here and as you move up to your throat you want to resist the urge to have your throat 
you know, close up and your shoulders go up and your upper body start to get tense. So that's the second stage. Staying relaxed, but engaged down in your core and using this throat articulation. That's stage two. Stage three is when you move up to your, your mouth and then you can, in, you can use your, the rest of your tongue to start f changing the tone and also working with your um, a tongue articulation, which is using a, usually a K or a T articulation to add even more articulation to the sound you're creating. So you're going from So I just went from core body to throat to, to tongue articulation in the mouth. And the other thing you can experiment more fully with even the deep articulation is opening and closing and moving your tongue up and down in your mouth to create a big and a small space to change the tone. And that usually is something you start working with more with the, when the throat articulation kicks in. So phase one, phase two, phase three. And then from there, you can add hand effects, microphone, other effects. But the, but the real signal that you're creating starts down here and then is modified progressively through your throat and your mouth and your tongue. So that's the crash course in building sound on your on your harmonica. And I'll, I'll give you a quick example of a practice session. This will be just a real, this is a crash course. So here's an example, starting off real slow. So I just went from core body to throat to tongue articulation in my mouth to hand effects. And if you add a metronome, There's plenty of other exercises you can do that will not only build up your coordination of all these various systems, but add to it the critical element of getting a sense of timing. So all of those together as a daily practice will build your foundation so strongly that as you play other things, they will immediately have a lot more power and presence. And when you go to play faster, like if you're working on playing scales, for example, by doing this daily process and running through the, you know, you can check yourself to see how fast you can play the rhythms and write down a number. <laughs> You know, and then just note the number on your on your metronome and keep trying to add it, but while you're maintaining your progress. So that's a good overview of a way to. It's a nice warm up, and like I said, if you do this every day for a while, you will start to hear a huge difference in your overall tone. And tone and timing are two of the biggest things you've got going for you as a harmonica player. I mean, let's face it, we, we, uh, we can't 
a sax player can, you know, they've got 10 fingers they can diddle around and they can play, you know, ultimately, if they work at it just as hard as you do, they're going to be playing faster than you. On the other hand, you can play these chords and a sax player can't do that. So you work on the strengths of the instrument by really developing this unique tone that you can get out of the instrument and exploring the whole range of it and getting your timing dialed into your core body muscles and your breathing. So at that point, you're, be, you're becoming a metronome through this practice. So there you go. I hope that gives you some ideas. Now, the other thing is I do have a beginner harmonica course where I dive into all of these things in great detail and it is free and you can find it, find the link to it down below and sign up for it and you'll, you'll, you'll get into this thing that you can keep going back to over and over again. And I break it down every step of the way and explain it in a lot more detail than I did right now. Now, if you've been playing harmonica for a while, what I just did may be a great review and all you need for now. But if you really want to make sure you've got your foundation concepts covered, it would be a good way to do it. And it'll give you more of a sample of how I teach this stuff. So there you go. I hope you found this useful. And I hope that you find this useful enough that if you haven't already subscribed below that you do subscribe and sign up for the notifications. I'm going to be putting out these videos once a week as long as I'm able to do it. And I hope you use this information to help you enjoy playing this amazing instrument. <laughs>